A roll call. Mr. Kearney? Present. Dr. Mariano? Uh, present. Mr. Cora? Present. Mrs. Eckenrow? Present. Mr. Kopik? Here. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Mazzarini? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mrs. Zelesnik? Here. All right. Okay, uh, we did have an executive session. I'd like to announce that we had an executive session uh, prior to this public meeting to discuss personnel and legal matters. Okay, for public comment, we, we'd like to invite any resident, taxpayer, or employee of the Charters Valley School District who wishes to address the board on an agenda item this evening to enter your name, address, and municipality in the chat section of this Zoom meeting. We ask that you please state your name and address when you approach the board. The board does deserve the right to limit the amount of time allotted for public discussion of any particular speaker or issue. Some of your concerns can be quickly addressed following your comments, while others may require more research and discussion. When appropriate, you are welcome to further to discuss your concerns with us following the meeting. We appreciate your interest. Please keep your comments to two to three minutes. Also, please remember the administration has posted a frequently asked question on the Charters Valley website to address any specific questions. You can email publicrelations at cvsd.net. Thank you. Kim, has anyone registered to speak on agenda items this evening? Yes, we have one person registered, Tara Boney Steele. Okay. Yeah, they can go, correct? Is she going to type her question in the chat or she needs to raise her hand to speak? Yeah, Tara, either raise your hand to speak or type your ch question in the chat. So she raised her hand in under attendees, if you could let her, yeah. Hi, my name is Tara Bonestiel and um, I sat through the school board meeting prior to the kids going back to school and it was explained to us that the teachers had gone through a lot of Google um, teaching and they were ready for this year and that it was gonna be different than what it was in March. We're two weeks, third, we're into the third week now, and um, it seems that I'm the teacher, so I'm trying to work full time. Luckily, I work from home, but all of her assignments are posted by the teachers, and then she's going in and filling out PowerPoint presentations and doing a lot of research on her own. The, the math that she is learning was something that they had covered last year. The Spanish, she has had maybe one class because they're only in classes two days a week and it depends on what day of the week it is when her Wednesday, Thursday happens to fall. Um, this was kind of not what I or many of the other parents kind of expected. We expected there to be a Google meet for each class and the teacher would teach to the kids in the classroom as well as the ones at home. And that's not happening. And from my understanding, if you go to any of the schools that are doing virtual for nine weeks, that's what their teachers are doing. So she goes to school Wednesdays and Thursdays and gets in classroom teaching. But Mondays, Tuesdays and Fridays, that's my job. So I'm paying taxes and teaching and working. <laughs> and it's it's a little overwhelming being a parent. And it's really frustrating when I'm paying the school to teach my child. And yet she comes into my, my office while I'm working and I'm doing her Thomas Edison assignment with her for science because everything's a PowerPoint presentation. And we've asked for what we got on the website is that each teacher will do 20 minute meet to answer questions. That's not teaching. I'm, I'm just really frustrated at this point um, because she wants to go back to school full time. Uh, 
And it's been a long time for myself in sixth grade. So I'm having a hard time and relying an awful lot on Google <laughs> and the internet to help her with these questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Um, is that all we have? Yes. All right. So we know recommend, uh, recognition, so superintendent report. There's a couple more here. Now we'll get back to that parent, correct? Right? Yeah. So there were a couple more hands up, but maybe maybe they didn't keep them up. We're gonna get to Mitty and Julie. Okay. So I've unmuted myself and I believe shared my screen um, with you all, but I do have an update on on various various things. So I guess as as mentioned, Chartiers Valley is now enter, entering the third week of hybrid learning. I wanted to thank our parents, our staff, our teachers, administrators, and students for their patience and hard work. Um, education is, is like we've never known it to be. Not only are we instructing in a pandemic, but it has altered in many cases how we deliver our curriculum. I wanna thank everyone for their hard work, but I know there have been bumps in the road. Um, I think it would be fair to say that some have a steeper learning curve when it comes to instructing this than others, but Please know that the district has heard concerns, it still is hearing concerns, and we are working with teachers to assist and improve daily. Um, also, I was fortunate enough recently to have a moment to reflect on how education has changed over the decades. I was thinking back to when I was a student and how my teachers taught and how information was presented to me. I'm sure it was quite similar to many of you and how you were taught, the teacher taught, the students received information, the students practiced that information, the students were tested on that information. However, as we entered the 21st century, there became a shift in education, and that shift has been titled the four C's. And these four C's are communication, collaboration, uh, creativity, and critical thinking. So we encourage our teachers to incorporate these higher level skills into their instruction. So we may see more instructional methods, such as project-based learning, discussion boards, group projects. It may not always be a teacher delivering for the entire period. There's a lot more back and forth than what we may be traditionally used to. And we have to be creative with this in an online environment um, for a variety of reasons as well. So as this time in history continues to carve its mark upon us all, I ask that if there are questions or concerns, please reach out to your teacher, your building principal, to Dr. Slavic, and myself, and know that we are hearing those concerns and we are working daily to modify and we are tweaking. And each week we reflect and we tweak as to what we're doing well and what we need to improve upon. So within this update that I have, there are a couple other things that have come up. And one was a COVID cleaning process. And I just wanna to reiterate to all of you that our facilities personnel have been trained according to CDC standards and recommendations. Daily, our facilities personnel disinfect our classes and spaces as if there has been a positive case. And I thought this was very interesting when I was speaking to our director of facilities. He said that basically they've been trained in wiping down desks, countertop, high touch areas, um, sweeping and mopping, misting the room with a surface disinfectant and using a fresh mi microfiber towel. In essence, we do two killings of the virus um, by using our daily cleaner. When we are told that there may be a possible case or whatever, the room is cleaned twice um, for a fresh set of eyes for that. So I kind of wanted to go through that process with everyone. And then also remember responding to an illness. We're still getting tweaks on this from the Department of Health. But when we are notified um, that there is a positive case uh, with that, we our procedure is to immediately notify the Department of Health, but we confirm if the case is positive from the Department of Health or, or parent 
The building admin will collect student and staff that were in close contact as defined by that and provide that list to the department chair of nursing. The department of chair of nursing then provides that list to the department of health. And in collaboration, students or staff are identified for quarantine. After that, they have, after they've been identified, then they will be contacted by either or the district and or the department of health via letter and phone call. And the student will then, if the opportunity employ remote learning during that quarantine or time period of extended absence. That's sort of our process that we go through. Um, there is a handbook that we have on our website that we've put together with some sample letters um, that you can see if there are any questions with that. I do need to commend uh, Nurse Opperman for doing a phenomenal job through all of this and putting these things together and being that, that constant um, communicator for these things. Um, some good news with a nutrition update, a seamless summer option um, has been awarded to Chartiers Valley. We have not been eligible for this option before because um, we did, the parameter was different and due to COVID that um, we are now eligible for this. And basically what that means is that all students um, who live in the district will be eligible to have free lunch and free breakfast uh, until either the funds are depleted or December 30th, whichever comes first. So that will begin tomorrow. There will be more communication coming out for that. Um, it will provide, again, free and reduced lunch and breakfast um, in a hybrid online or face-to-face. -face. But it will be very important to utilize the online breakfast and lunch form that we have for parents. So we'll know that who's, who's, what parents will be picking up on those days. And again, that will begin tomorrow. Um, so if your student says, oh, I wasn't charged for lunch today, you know why that is. So um, that was a great opportunity that we had from that. Diana, where did those funds come from? Those are state and federal funds. Those aren't local tax dollars picking up. Correct. Those, those are not. No. This is a national lunch program, and there were different. Um, there's different criteria under COVID that enabled the district to be eligible. We just found out we were eligible this morning. They sent in nutrition sent in the application for it last week when we found out that we may be able to apply and they notified us this morning that we were eligible or that we were awarded it. Mm -hmm. And Great then, job. thanks. And then lastly, uh, a tentative reopening timeline. I know there's been questions about this. If you remember um, on August 14th, we received some guidance on the 17th. There was a dashboard, obviously the first day of school and we've been monitoring ever since. So, um, this week, we'll be analyzing building return plans and comparing data and receiving these. After we go through these plans, um, I would hope to make some type of recommendation to the board on the 22nd as to what type of return uh, we would recommend and if it would be building by building or if it would be the entire district, if there may be plan A and plan B, but those options will be presented to the board on the 22nd. And excitingly enough, hopefully things continue. We've been, we've been going well these past couple weeks. Knock on wood, that continues. Um, at that point, um, tentatively September 22nd through 27th, parents would then have the ability, once some type of reopening is acted upon, if they choose to go fully online, they will still have that choice to do so. Um, that I think it's important to maintain that opportunity for our families. Uh, except we will need to know that for scheduling purposes. So they will have the 22nd through the 27th to then change for online. If they're already online, nothing needs to be done, but only if you are switching from hybrid to online. And then um, September 28th through October 4th, um, obviously we will make any modifications that we would need to based upon any switching of enrollment and potentially uh, we may have some students who would return to a five-day schedule willing um, on the fifth. Yes, the second row. So just for clarity, um, if the idea is to announce return to school plans, the idea of being able to change from full-time to online, like full remote to online, no, okay. sorry, from hybrid to online, you also need to know, though, don't you? Who's going to come back full time? Do you not? So if if you have 
So do you need everybody to fill this out or only the people who are moving to remote who weren't previously remote? Correct. Only people, only people that at this point, we'll have to take it in, in chunks to see, but at this point, um, the thought was only people that are saying, no, I'm, I'm a hybrid and I want to go online. Uh, and everyone, the assumption would be everyone else is full time. And then when would you expect okay. to, to find out for people that want to come back more than two days a week? I'm sorry, Dr. Mariano. So when will, if I take the opposite question, after we realize the people that want to go or stay online, when would you ask the people to decide from going the two days a week to hybrid to go to full, full time? Same time. Oh, same time. We turn to the agenda if you search. So all right, thank you for that. That's all. Okay, so next we have the consent agenda. Um, and then, okay, may I have a motion for items 3.2 through 3.6 and 3.8 through 3.11? So may I have a motion? So moved. Yeah, and a second there. Second's fine. Okay. Any discussion on these items? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Um, I would just like to take a, a brief moment and congratulate uh, Miss Watlett. I believe she is with us this evening. Um, yep, and you guys just approved her to be um, our new assistant principal at the high school. Um, Mr. Buck will be sadly missed. However, we are very excited um, for, uh, for her to be joining us. So congratulations. And if there are any questions or comments or anything uh, that you have for Ms. Well, it's nice to have you. Thank Thanks you. Thank you for joining our team. <laughs> look forward to working with you. Thank you. I do too. Welcome aboard. Congratulations. Well, welcome aboard. Yes. Congratulations. Welcome. Is there is there anything that you wanted to share with us tonight, Megan? Um, I just wanted to uh, say how excited I am to join um, this community. I have previous experience as a special education teacher, a high school English teacher, and I'm currently a school counselor up at Butler. Um, and your reputation speaks itself, and I'm very excited to be part of this community. Great. Well, you have a great background, and we're excited to have you join the team. Thank you. All right. Next, we have um, the action uh, discussion items. Uh, education, they're seeing these Leslie. I believe um, Dr. Slavic is going to provide us with an update. We can't hear anything. I'm, I'm on now. Can you hear me? Sure. Great, great. Okay. So we are now on the 11th day of school. Um, our cyber enrollment is around 1,021. Our hyper enrollment is, is our, the rest of our student population. During the first two weeks of school, teachers are working on navigation of virtual classrooms. They're working on students getting acclimated with utilizing Google tools and Schoology tools online. Um, teachers were also looking at just checking in with our students on social emotional awareness. How are they doing after this long break that they've had? Um, weeks two and three are coming. And what's happening at that point is teachers are really focusing in on 
gathering data, like determining where our kids are since the shutdown in March. So our students will begin testing CDTs, Acadians, teacher created assessments. Our new math program has a wonderful assessment to determine our students' math needs. So all of these assessments will be coming out over the next few weeks. Um, notification will go out to parents so that you're aware of some of the changes that may occur in instruction. These are the um, assessments that we use every school year and they're always extremely valuable to our instruction and our curriculum. But this school year, it's even more imperative that we identify our students' needs from March to June when we were shut down to now when we're back in session. Um, what do we need to do to our curriculum to change it, to make it more accessible to our students and to provide interventions and enrichment for those that need it? Teachers are also working very hard in an environment, as Dr. Venata stated, that they were never tr previously trained to work in. Um, they've been collaborating a lot more than I've ever seen them in, in education. They're learning new technology daily. They're also faced with technology um, pitfalls, as we're all aware. Um, uh, just an example, recently Google had an issue with their program where students couldn't open specific documents, um, but that was since resolved. So we're slowly working through these little hiccups that occur. Um, teachers are increasing their communication with parents. This is obviously something we're continuing to work on, but some great opportunities have come from this situation. We, at our primary school, our parents um, are, have the opportunity to meet with teachers every week um, through Google Meet. So parents can log in, talk to the teacher as a group and just work through specific questions. Um, teachers, I know, throughout the school district are working on getting through the list of our cyber student families and contacting them directly to say, hey, just get some feedback. How are things going? What are our needs? Um, what do we need to change and what do we need to work on? Uh, which flows right into what Dr. Venata also said. Um, we do experience some growing pains with this process. It's new to all of us, despite training that they've encountered. Um, you know, there are still some things that we're working on. We're working on the technology. The bandwidth um, increased isn't going to come until around the 15th of September. So on September 15th, we're hoping to see our bandwidth increase tremendously, which will be extremely helpful for our Google Meets and our connecting of our students and our teachers and our classrooms. So if anyone's seeing sometimes the Google Meets are shutting down or not working or teachers have to um, reschedule them at a moment's notice, generally it's because of our bandwidth. And that is not a district issue. That is a Allegheny County where we're receiving our bandwidth from. Um, and as Pittsburgh Public School and many schools went online today, um, that's also going to pull on the bandwidth, you know, in the surrounding areas. Um, and teachers are continuing to increase that, that communication um, for parents. We had a parent meeting last week where we received some very valuable feedback about streamlining communication, fine tuning it, maybe not making as overwhelming. Um, we're making a list of ongoing, every time a parent contacts us, we're making a list of their needs and their suggestions and their comments. And then we're going back to the teachers and having those discussions about what can we do to improve upon what we're already doing. So that's, that's the update. Thank you. All right, uh, finance board liaison on Beth Eckenrode. Nothing new to note. All right. Uh, facilities board liaison, Jeff Chora. I also have nothing to report this evening. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, policy board liaison, Tony Mazzarini. No report as well. Okay. Technology board liaison, Darren. Darren Mariano. As Dr. Slavic stated, we increased our bandwidth from 200 megabits per second to 400 megabits per second but this won't begin until September 15th. All right, uh, transportation, Julie Murphy. Or I, have, I, have, I have no, I nothing, have no to nothing to update. Um, and personnel, board liaison, Eric Kramer, I believe you have something. Um, uh, well, the uh, superintendent the recommends, recommends, and I so move to recommend and nominate recommend the PSBA nominate. candidates listed on the attachments. In which we have not seen so over. All right. <laughs> Second. No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
We can't hear anybody, just so you know. Is that better? Sure. Yeah. So that, that last with athletics and activities, um, there's no uh, new report for athletic activity. And then we have public comments again. Do you want to read, Darren? Sure. Is there anyone who'd like to address the board in a non-agenda item before we adjourn? If so, please enter your name and address in the chat section and state your name before speaking. Uh, Kim, did anyone sign up for agenda items? I did see a few people uh, type some, some things in. Uh, so we could start at the top. Uh, Christina's the first one. Or Krista, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hi, I hope it is unmuted. I'm sorry, I'm at my son's baseball game. No, it's um, okay. Yes, hi, I'm Krista Dapper. I live at 66 Cypress Drive, 15106. Um, I know somebody answered um, to me privately, which is great. And I do understand that the goal is to go back to in-person instruction. I just want to comment that if it doesn't go that way, um, I'm hoping that the school calendar will be looked at because I do believe that children should have at least the two days of instruction um, with this Labor Day holiday this week. And now we have Friday where I feel like maybe some adjustment should have been made to the calendar um, because now my son's only in school one day this week. So that's just my first comment. Um, and then I wanted to find out if we've considered using that fifth day of the week as like an alternating day for the groups if we stay in the hybrid model. So those were my questions. Okay. So is there any other statements from any other participants? I think Catherine would like to speak. Uh, she wrote in the chat, I'd like to comment at the end, Cassie Neff, Sunrise Drive, Carnegie PA. If she could raise her hand, I can allow her to talk and unmute her. Okay, there she goes. All right. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, just a quick comment. I have uh, one student at the primary school and one at the intermediate school. I found that the primary school has been super organized and I mean, I just log on. I know exactly what my son has to do listed from one to 10 and then for reading and then one to 10 for math. And then here's a special, it's very organized. We may not have live instruction, but there's pre-recorded messages from all the second grade teachers. And I find even though he's there for four hours a day, it's, it's pretty organized and I feel like we're doing okay. At the intermediate school, I'm not finding the same type of organization, um, interaction with the teachers and and even just, it seems to be by teacher, teacher by teacher as to how they organize their Google Classroom alone. Some information is found in the classwork area. Some of it's found in the to-do section. And even when I try to find his, like turn in his work at the end of the day to make sure that he's turned everything in, something else will pop in there. It just seems like we're all over the place. And I think that he's getting frustrated. I'm getting frustrated. And I just wish that the schools would be more uniform in how they're organizing these classrooms. That's my first comment. Um, my second comment is about what's happening at recess. I understand there's a lot on, on the lunch monitor's plates. There's a lot on the teacher's plates, but the children aren't allowed to bring anything in from home to occupy them at recess. They're not even allowed to play with each other. So they're literally standing around 
in the heat and basically doing nothing. I think they're allowed to probably run around the track. Um, I asked, or I, I should say my, my son asked if he could bring something in from home. I allowed it and it was taken off of him at school. I think that if these children are allowed to bring in a number of supplies from home, why should they not be allowed to bring something personal for them to do during recess, whether it be, you know, a Rubik's cube or a bouncing ball or you know, something small that they can play with themselves because they're so bored. And so that's my other comment. My last one is, and I, when the superintendent was speaking in the beginning, I don't know if she mentioned it because um, I came on a little bit late, but what is the current procedure for if there's a positive case at home, not necessarily a student or a teacher, but a family member that is living in the house, such as a grandparent or a step parent or, you know, step brother or whatever, what is the current procedure for the family if there is a, a, a positive COVID patient, I should say, at home? What should the family do and what does the school then do in response to that? That's all. Uh, Ms. Neff, I can speak to your last question pretty briefly, and that's a, a great question. If there is a positive case in your immediate household, then that that family member, those family members would need to go into isolation um, for a, a period of days. I believe it is 14 days for that. Um, that is also in our handbook. Um, if you have an experience with that, then we ask that the families notify the district. So. Uh, that you know this this child um, has had a po confirmed positive in their immediate household, and um, you know obviously they're going to monitor symptoms and keep them at home for a period of time. I would also obviously monitor those symptoms and follow up with your pediatrician. You should be getting guidance, I would assume, from your doctor and from the Allegheny County Department of Health when you receive those positives. Uh, I know that there have been instances, if there was a positive, that those, once those positives have been acknowledged, um, those people receive direction as to what, what they need to do as well. And just on that, just, just to explain, the, that's the exposure twice removed from the school. That's why there's nothing needs to be done in the school. Oh, okay. you, you follow me? I, and I've experienced with that, so I've gained that knowledge. So it's twice removed from the school. So there's nothing to have to be done to the school. And we have an some of your items in that, and we are going to look at that, but we do have an awareness in our working on, on improving. Okay, so I would just like to reiterate, if you'd like to speak, please raise your hand. Um, so the next person I see is Melissa Taylor at 289 Sunrise Drive, Carnegie, PA. Michaela, if you could let her uh, speak, that'd be great. Hi, I, I wrote a comment, so I, I won't take much of your time, but I just wanted to echo uh, Cassie Neff's comments about the intermediate school. Uh, I block my calendar daily to begin the day with my son because navigating uh, Google Classroom has become very challenging. Uh, each teacher does it differently. Uh, one of his teachers posts and somehow the oldest items are first. So we're looking at the first day of school assignments. You have to scroll to the bottom. Sometimes it's in to do, sometimes it's in classroom. Quite honestly, sometimes I swear it's not there. And then when I review with him at the end of the day, suddenly we have an assignment and we have no notification that it ever came in. It's very confusing. Uh, my son cries daily because of uh, feeling like he's disappointing his teacher, disappointing me. He's had items returned to him that he thought he filled out and he didn't. It's, it's very frustrating. And so if there were more standards on how the teachers posted things and if our access to them is better. Now, I will say uh, my son has Mr. Quinn. He has been nothing but fantastic. And I... Uh, I think he has done a fantastic job, but the consistency is just not there and they do have a lot of teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa.
Does anybody else? Uh, okay, um, we have one more, Michaela. Marlena, you'll have to unmute yourself. All right, sorry. Um, That's okay. I guess what, uh, my name is Marlena Gerking. We're in Scott at 33 Jampia Drive. Uh, the one thing that I guess I haven't heard a lot of, uh, my son is in the intermediate school, and we have never worked with him on keyboarding skills. And it certainly doesn't seem like that is in the curriculum, but it's certainly something that he needs right now. And I don't know if this has been addressed before, but um, these open text responses are very painful for third graders. You know, and, and I can echo everybody else's um, previous comments. I totally agree with everything they have said. Um, with the struggles this has been and you know I also am working from home and having him shout in the background where's the E is is not you know like this isn't how anybody wants to spend their day thank you thank you thank you Marlena we just actually implemented a computer class and the uh, primary school to, to go over some of these aspects. Um, and as curriculum moves through, hopefully our students will, will close that gap a little bit moving forward. But valid point, thank you. Michaela, the next person is Tina. Hello, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, Christina Cerny, 1771 Bower Hill Road, Scott Township. Um, I'd also like to second, third, fourth, a lot of the uh, issues with the intermediate school. I talked to Dr. Slavic today. I've talked to Mrs. Frenzik today. I've talked to one of his teachers today. Um, and my son is a cyber kid in a hybrid classroom. And there is major issues that are there, as is my daughter, um, who is in third grade. My son is in fourth grade. My daughter in uh, the primary school is in first grade and she's in a strictly cyber class. I think that it's really difficult to have these teachers have both hybrid students and cyber students. The cyber students are getting lost in the shuffle. I, like uh, the mom just said, my son cries every day. He, we had an assignment that took us four hours today because he's working strictly in Google Slides. Um, and we're gonna print stuff out, but that's at a cost to us just so that he can understand it. And the teachers are great. We're working with them to get him what he needs, but we shouldn't have to be printing out stuff. It should be given to us. First grade, they're getting packets that they can use, take pictures and send in. Um, so I really wanna know what's gonna be done for these cyber kids that are in hybrid classrooms that are just getting lost. Thank you. Uh, there's one more, Kimberly Harris. Good evening. Um, I have just the opposite issue as a lot of the parents prior to me. I work 50 hours a week. I am not home to teach my child. And my child's not crying. I am. Because as a parent, I am not able to help coach him through this disaster. I am so disgusted that the school has not given us what they promised us back at the end of March that this year would be different. It has not been different. He gets one or two assignments per teacher and not now that we're out of the intermediate school, we're in the middle school with pre-algebra. I, my question is from an email that I got from a Spanish teacher, the email pretty much told me that they were on their own to teach themselves Spanish. So my question is, are any of you able to teach him Spanish because I'm not? So how is that fair as a parent that you expect us to teach our children things that we were not taught as children? 
and I'm not home to do it. Thank you. No fog with you. Is that it, Dan? Yes, that's the last one. Okay, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed to stopping? Okay, that's it.